Hello everybody. We are here today talking about three amazing tips to empower your food allergy child. So I am just going to get myself sorted out here, get my notes. So we're going to talk about three amazing tips to empower your food allergy child. But first, I wanted to let you know that I have a uh, free one week top allergen flexible meal plan that you can all get for any of you who want some new recipes that you want to accommodate your family's food allergies. Check it out. I will put, I'm going to put the link for Facebook. I'm going to put the link in the comments if I can. It's free.friendlypantry.com slash meal plan. So I'm putting that in the comments. And then for everybody on Instagram, it is going to be in my bio. So just click, click on the link in bio to grab that. Um, so secondly, Everything I talk about in this live is going to be in my blog post that I wrote a couple of weeks ago. So don't worry if um, you miss something or you want a little bit more detail, you can go back to friendlypantry.com and you can get the blog post and the information there. And I want to let you know that I'm definitely not a parenting expert. Um, I am a 12 year food allergy mom and I've been watching the struggles that teens with food allergies in particularly have been going through and I've been kind of watching it for a long time. Some of these struggles include not wanting to be different from their peers so they hide their allergies or being too embarrassed to carry their EpiPen or they feel like it's not fair that they got food allergies and that their friends don't. So if you're here today, or if you're watching the replay, um, give me a heart or a thumbs up. Is this something that you worry about for your food allergy teen? So right now you may have a little one. You may have one that's three or just newly diagnosed, but when they get to their teens, there's definitely going to be struggles like this. So let me know if that's something that you are worried about. So keeping the teen struggles in mind, my husband and I, we've been working on ways to help our daughter to feel confident with her allergies for quite a long time. And, sorry, I'm just going to double check here. Yep, sorry about that. But we've been kind of making sure that, um, you know, we keep these things in mind as we go through our parenting. So I want my daughter to know what to say and how to say it when she's in social situations. And we want her to know that all the things, even weaknesses that she gets, can be used to make us stronger as a person. And we can help others in those situations. And we also want her to have a sense of responsibility for taking care of herself and her health instead of feeling like a victim of her situation. So honestly, our main goal in our parenting in this area is to address the difficult teen and young adult years and prepare her for those struggles so she's responsible and makes healthy decisions during her teen years. And let me tell you, the tips that I'm gonna tell you are not necessarily easy. They sometimes mean making really tough choices, just like anything in parenting. And it also means that following through on things are really hard to do sometimes. But I really believe that if we do follow through, as parents, our tough decisions will be rewarded in the end. So there is light at the end of the tunnel. If you can do some of the things that are a little bit harder now, it will be great for them in the end. So if this sounds good, then I'm going to go into the three amazing tips. I'm just going to go to my blog post and um, talk about them. So the first one is we always are consistent with bringing our EpiPen or our epinephrine everywhere we might be eating or drinking. So the rule is no epinephrine no eating or drinking. And we're extremely diligent with this rule because we believe that instilling it now will help our daughter be strong and make smart decisions when she isn't around us as much in the teen years. But uh, I'll tell you a story. We um, were going to a family member's house that lives about 45 minutes away from us and we were halfway there 
when we found out we forgot our epinephrine. And so this was not an easy decision, but we said, look, we have to go back. Otherwise we can't, my daughter can't eat dinner. So we turned around, got off the, the highway and went back home and turned around to get the epinephrine. So I know that this, I mean, in the moment, it seems like kind of, kind of silly and a hard thing to do, but that decision makes, gives, it shows a message to our child and it shows them that this really is important because we want them to know that if we do it and we want to, them to see that if we do it, they will do it too, hopefully when they're in their teen years. So being consistent and following through and doing these things really gives them that message that we want to give them. So number two, we encourage our daughter to speak for herself in as many situations as possible. And honestly, this is really hard for me to do because um, sometimes it means I have to let her have an awkward moment where she waits for me to speak um, and, then, and then I don't. Because, she, you know, not all kids are really, it doesn't come easy for them to um, talk to people or strangers or waiters or waitresses. So we have to kind of find a balance between forcing them and talking for them. So it's hard to find that balance, but definitely as you go through it, as you keep working at it, it will get better. So if you keep on, keep it on and do it and let them um, do the talking, that will help. And not only that, but you can also work with them to kind of practice. So what do you want to say to a waiter when they ask? Or how will you talk to a teacher that doesn't know well, most of them know because we talk about it at the beginning of the year, but um, somebody else that doesn't know about your food allergies, what are you gonna say and how are you gonna say it? You can help them do this and work with them to do it. So um, definitely something that's important to do. And the third amazing tip is wearing her own EpiPen and remembering to bring it herself. Now, when my child was just little, um, of course I carried it for her like preschool and all that time because she was always with me and I always you know was around her it wasn't a problem starting kindergarten we started to think about her carrying it herself but her teacher was really great with allergies and she was fine with um, carrying it everywhere they went so that worked out well and depending on how responsible your kid is I mean that you're gonna to have to make that decision. But definitely in grade one, my daughter was quite responsible, so I started getting her to carry it herself to school. So we got her a nice little carrier, something that matched her uniform and that she liked, and that really helped to get her um, into the mode of carrying it herself, and she got into the, the mode for school. But then when she was kind of around, I think grade three, we started to think about her carrying it everywhere herself and of course I always have a backup in my purse but now and what we started doing then was we got her a little carrier that she likes so we chose a purse because she liked it and she also still uses her waistband every once in a while too but um, she picks something that she likes to carry it in and that will help too so if you have a boy maybe a little backpack or something that they really relate to and really enjoy carrying that's really helps and then um we just started to get her into the the mode and i kind of go into that a little bit more on the blog but helping them carry it now helps them in so many ways because it also gets their friends that they're growing up with it gets them to know oh she always carries her rp pen i know why she carries it because she's had that conversation so when she gets to that teen years and those difficult, more difficult times, she'll be, um, some of the kids will already know. It won't be all new to all of them. So hopefully that will kind of help her as she gets into those more difficult years. So those are the three tips. Let me know, I mean, if you have something that you do, I'd love to hear about it because these are only three tips. And um, 
Let us know in the comments if you're watching the replay, what do you do to help your child, food allergy child, feel empowered? I'd love to know. And don't forget, I have that free one week top allergy flexible meal plan. I put that in the comments for people on Facebook and then it's in my bio for people on Instagram. And um, otherwise, I plan to go live on Thursdays talking about other food allergy, family, and mom issues. So make sure to join me. Look for me on Thursday mornings. Um, but other than that, that's it for now. And we will talk to you soon.